Hello. I'm pretty excited today. It's a uh, new tent day. Uh, so if you've been following the channel, you'll probably be aware. And if you haven't, there's loads of videos there. That for the last couple of years in the winter, I've been using a Hleberg Solo. It's a fantastic tent, really good. Very strong, very robust. Oh, I mean, some of the situations I've been in, in that tent, um, I've been literally snowed in. I've been on the summit of Kader Idris in gale force winds. I've camped on the summit of Scarfell Pike in really rough weather. Um, it's really stood me well, really stood me well. But it's, it's a one person tent. So it's quite small and with Cora it doesn't really give a lot of space. So I sold it and that left me with my trek and pole tent uh, which obviously isn't any good for the winter so I knew I'd have to replace it. So in this bag is a brand new Falraven tent. It's a two person uh, Abisko light and I haven't even opened it. I've taken it out the box, put it in this bag, and that's it. So I've come to this lovely park to put it up and just have a little look and see what it's like. So uh, come along with us and see what the Abisko light is like. Oh, oh, actually, there's a bit more to it than that because not only is it, let me see where this dog's got this is. Not only is it uh, a Fal Raven or Raven, uh, a Bisco Light 2, it's one of their B category ones, so it's cost me brand new £445 UK in 2024, which is an absolute bargain. Some places have them listed at about 700 quid. The reason it's a B category is that there is apparently a striping on the fly sheet, so uh, we'll have a look and see how off-putting that is. However, Fal Raven say it doesn't affect the tent in any other way, just visually. So uh, let's have a look and let's see if saving the money was worth it or whether the stripe will just do my head in. Brought my own pegs just in case I need them. And here is the Fall Raven or Raven Visco Light. I like the bike, it's got compression straps on it. Just to them. These are the poles, which are uh, nice, strong bag. Even Cora's a bit excited by this, I think. We have some right, colour coded two poles. I think one is nine mil and I think one is ten from what I've read, but I'll put the numbers up on the screen just to be sure. We've got ah that's really nice. We've got two spare pieces of pole which are colour coded. Anything else in there? Let's see. Tell me about the poles, little leaflet. Pop this in there. Nice, I'm gonna move back a little bit now. So let's see what we've got. Still got my label on it. Hopefully it's all in here, right? So it's a top opener. Oh, it's got like an extra sort of extension to the bag, which will be quite handy for when you're packing. Let's get rid of this for a second. Get this bag out the way. Right. Got some uh, some pegs here. There we are. Nice uh, aluminium pegs. Not dissimilar to. Hellyberg pegs, these are DAC. Put 
than there with the others. Actually, what I'll do, let's grab a, a peg or two. I want to set it up, eh? What I'm going to do is I'm going to run it with the back against the wind, which I believe is the correct way to go. So it's colour coded, it's a little gold tab and internal sleeves which can be a bit of a nuisance, so let's find out. So it's got a little internal foot, just goes into. Stay there, yes, smelly bum. <laughs> right, and again, we've got a nice red colour coding on the sleeve. Nicely seated in the cover. Should have let that off, I think, first. Nice and loose. Goes into the little hole there. There's that in. There's uh, room to double pole if you need to. Oh, that's the tent pitched really quick, really easy. I didn't time it, but a couple of minutes, literally. Uh, you get enough pegs with it as well, which is always nice. Let's take you around the outside then. I haven't been inside yet, so let's see. So, outside, as you can see, it's a tunnel design. It's sloping. Um, from everything I've read, the tent is much stronger if you pitch it with the rear facing into the wind, which I've done. Uh, it's not particularly windy though. We've got 
Dyneema guy lines with the, love these, the really nice single touch adjusters. I, w I think I will almost certainly put an adjuster on the other side, just makes it easier because often you're going to try and level it out by kind of, you know, taking the pressure out here and it is easier to put little adjusters on I think. Um, possibly that's because what I'm used to with my hilly bag solo but it works so we'll make that adjustment for it anyway. But uh, poles are in, nice and sturdy, I mean I've not got this pitch particularly tight at the moment but uh, even just like this it's really, it really is, it's nice and tight actually already. Uh, you've got really robust pegging out points just as a here really strong um, I like that these are adjustable with me solo you had a nice web and loop but it wasn't adjustable so you're only actually pushing your pole right through to the foot and then connecting it on one side which is much better now I can see if there's like a kind of fine fine stripe in it um, which apparently is a, a dying fault but to be honest it looks like it's meant to be like that um, it's not giving me any concern the stripe on it whatsoever in fact I quite like it so it's like a giant Everton mint for me um, right let's have a look inside then right let's open this up for the first time so we've got velcro on the bottom of the stone flap that's so nice yeah oh I like this okay I like that, I really like that on the uh, fly. So I really like these adjusters where you pull it back to tighten it in. Uh, really good. That's actually a modification I've done on my Dorsten Extmid uh, for the internal door. Um, just so much easier. Right, let's see. Now then, inside. So we've got a porch here. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get the uh, footprint for it which will cover this and give you a little bit more of a usable space but uh, I haven't got it yet right so sorry about the uh, lawnmower noise in the background but nothing I can do oh, let's get my feet in already come on stinky bum so this door you just roll it off the floor Pass the toggle through. If I can do it, it just may be a bit rubbish. Pull it through and it holds it nicely on the floor. Pleased with that. But, uh, just do this side. Let's, as you can see, it just sits nice and neat at the bottom. Really happy with that. I'll show you the uh, bug net and the kind of warmer, windproof covers on it in a minute. Very similar to me solo from that point of view. Now, also got here a nice vent. It's got no seam mesh. mesh. <laughs> it's got no seam mesh. And again, it's got that really nice toggle system to uh, tie it down. Pleased with that. Really nice airflow from that. Right, let's get inside again and see. So from this end, as you can see, it's got a nice solid door. Uh, the inside, it's again, it's a nylon rather than a mesh. So it's great for the four season use. We've got it dangling here. You get with it um, a nice, well, I call it a drying line because that's what I use them for. That runs the entire length of the tent with an adjuster, which is a very nice touch. Now here, you can see there's a, a second zip which again arches down and it gives you a nice mesh panel for when it's warm and you want a bit of air coming through and the good thing is 
it's got loops as well so you can tie it back with the toggle system uh, just down here and keep it out the way which is a nice touch I'll just put that back up now oh, let's see so I would be sleeping I'd be sleeping down this hand at the kind of higher end of the tent now I'm not on a mat and I'm about 5'10 um, sit I'm 5'10 I'm sitting up my head's just barely touching it so with a mat I'm gonna to have to drop my head a little bit not the end of the world if I squish myself right to the door doorway though I have got some room not a massive amount but yeah it's comfortable I don't mind that at all we've got pocket there pocket there same on this side um, now I like this touch so we've got a little zipper here and that's just to give us access to this so again we've got no seam mesh on the other side of this and you can vent the fly sheet so you can get a nice breeze coming right through and over now with me heli bake solo there were one or two occasions when i did suffer with condensation um putting that into the context of having a dog sat next to me panting all night you're going to get a little bit wasn't a massive problem but i would imagine with this venting system in the uh, Fall Raven, I can't see that being a problem really. Uh, let's see what it's like lengthwise. Not quite sure. I'll get this on video, but let's see. Um, oh, hello. You've got a little dog. Hello, what do you want? Hello. She doesn't like me laying down without getting in on the action. Can I show the people the length of the tent? Will that be all right? Would it be all right? <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Let me try and tell you while I'm laying down with the dog's head in the way. So I'm laying down, and if you can see at the uh, foot of the tent, that's probably as far as I, I can go with my feet without touching. Okay. Um, up at the top, my head is. Oh, sorry about that. Up at the top, my head is pretty much. Oh near enough at the top so lengthwise let's get this a little bit higher and a better, a little bit better. I mean, lengthwise it's just about okay for least trees now i'm only going to be using this on my own so if i go a little bit of a slant though which is probably how i'll do it i've got much more much more room for me head um but either way it, it's not too bad oops sorry but either way the length is not too bad um probably on a par with me other tents to be honest maybe not me Dawson me Dawson's maybe a little bit more roomy let's sit up eh? let's sit up hang on that's better isn't it yeah so lengthwise not too bad it's not the longest in the world but certainly comfortable enough for a person to camp in if you can see we've got a good good depth bathtub and uh, I'll put the denier for the ground sheet. In fact, I'll put the Danny for it all, but it looks like it's got a rip stop in it, which is a nice touch as well. Come here. Sit. What I would say, it's a warm tent because it's not the hottest of days, it's a bit sunny. But yeah, I was really hot sat on there with it zipped up without the uh, mesh panels open. <coughs> you can see there, the door zipped down nicely. Um, it's got a double zip, so we've got an upper zip. So we can open it and vent and have a little look out and sometimes it's easier to get out of your tent when there's a lot of snow when it's like that but what there is as well is this let me just show you i think this is a, a really neat trick so you open it and just here there's an eye okay and at the bottom of the door there's a little peg and you just put that through there your tent down and what you've got you've got a small space now to let all the air in 
If you're cooking in here, which I know you shouldn't, but you know, someone like me just might, you can vent it really well without all the rain coming in. I think that's a fantastic touch. I really like that. So my first impression of the Falraven Bisco Light 2. Well, it's a well-made tent. Um, it's going to be a warm tent, I think, which is good for me because I'm going to be using it in the winter. But it's got lots of ventilation, which I'm really pleased about as well. When I've pitched it, it's nice and uh, nice and taut. And that's without me really batting it down. But uh, yeah, really taut. I think it'll stand up to the wind really well, which is one of the reasons that I chose it. It goes right down to the ground. So proper four season tent, keep the elements out really like the blue um good looking tent like the foul raven or raven uh badge with the little arctic fox as well i know it's a bit daft but i do um all the tying in points are robust and um i can't wait to get out there so hopefully the next video you'll see from me after this will be me having a wild camp to try it out and uh, get ready for the winter from what I've read, you don't need to seem silly, so I'm not going to. So we'll see what happens from that point of view as well. Um, which should be all right. I think every uh, review I've seen is damn good. So I hope you've enjoyed the video as much as I've enjoyed looking at my new tent. And uh, if you have, please click like. I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. Be really grateful. And uh, more than anything, hope you continue to watch my videos and that you enjoy them. And I'll see you soon when I get out there wild camping in my new tent. You take care. Bye for now.